Good evening, guys and girls. Sunday Night Rant, which is today, Monday, and I am just going to wait for this audience to build up. So, um, hi, and sorry for the change of date. Long weekend. Didn't want to compete with the NRL Grand Final. Didn't want to compete with... uh, the break that many people were having, including myself. And I was going to do the Sunday night rant from the streets of Byron Bay, but I'm in fact going to be doing it from, hi Katie, from my uh, uh, apartment, which is pretty much in the heart of Byron. So guys and girls, this is, hello John, and hello to everyone that says hi, and if I miss you it's because I'm not looking at the screen at the time. Hello, Jay Lee. Now, I'd love you to press that share button. Hello, Bryce, good to see you. It's good to see you all. I love seeing the name come up on the screen. Hello, Richard, good to see you. Um, So, um, hey, George Soros, thank you. I've been sitting in the sun for four or five days in Noosa, now in Byron Bay, and um, Hello, Nicholas from Crawford BMW. If you haven't done that already, I'd love you to press that share button. Susan Zeng, good to see you, Susan. Hello, Marie, how are you going? Hope you had a great weekend as well. Hello, Charlie. Fantastic. All righty. Hello, Russell. So, guys and girls, hello, Nick Carr. The man, if you want to buy a Honda, you see no one else but Nick at Sutton's in Homebush. Hello, Phoebe, how are you going? Hello, Peter, how are you going? From Harcourts in the Hills, one of the great agents there. Richard, Johnny Manners, how are you going? I do know we need to catch up. Adrian Bow, the great real estate agent from the southeast. Frederick Fregamatos from Rain and Horn at Petersham. Hi, Viola. So, guys and girls... I'm going to finish the romper room hellos, and there's a, someone joining us from the UK. Press that share button. And today, I'm going to start off by saying that ego is the enemy. As I put in my, teena, uh, in my teaser there, I want you to understand how it all begins. It all starts at school. When we're at school, they begin the grading. They begin putting people in first second or third grade. So they categorize people. And it is at this point that we learn that we're either better, equal or lower than other people. And the process begins of categorization, of actually separation, of actually saying to people, you are not all equal. Some of you are smarter than others. At the time that they do that, they're using comprehension generally as the rule and sometimes a little bit of IQ, very little of EQ. But we learn at a very early age through school that the process that we um, separate people and make them feel um, in different statuses. So this then continues, of course, And what actually happens is the conditioning that we have from our friends, our teachers, our parents, is that we then begin to think that people are different to us, which is the first thing of the ego. Now, the ego, listen very carefully, the ego is the false self. The ego is the fake mask. The ego says, I am my job. I am what I own, I am the car I drive, I am how much money I have, I am the house I have, I am the car I drive, I am my reputation, I am how smart my kids are or what schools they go to. And what this basically does is move you away from your authentic self. Now, if you actually think about it, when you were born onto this planet, that miracle that happened where, you know, 
um, and I'm sorry to have to describe it this way, that um, you know, for you to be here, um, the chances is just one in millions and millions and millions. You know, the fact that um, two things came together, I won't mention the words, but you get the idea where you were conceived. You actually came from the source. You came from the source with nothing. And what's interesting is that you will go back to the source with nothing. You came exactly with nothing and you're going with nothing. But somewhere along the way, somewhere along the way, you're actually taught that um, uh, possessions and accumulations are the things that your achievements are. Now, I'm going to go as far as saying that um, what we see, particularly in the world of social media, is um, a world of uh, fakeness. And I actually started off by saying the best, the best selfies look nothing like you. So what actually happens is that people begin to present an outside mask of the way that they want people to look at them. And um, um, yes, I have read, Chris, the book, um, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan um, um, Holiday or Halliday. I, I can't remember what, what it is, but it is a, a, a great book. And as Chrissy says, fake book, not Facebook. So I'm going to give you a word of advice. I'm going to let you know that what you need to do is to be able to have the ability to walk into a room and not be worried that you're better or worse than another person. Actually, the best way to get someone's approval is to not need it in the first place. I'm going to say that the most attractive people I meet on the planet don't have this neediness or that this constant addiction to show that they have more or are better than another person. They are just themselves. And because they're themselves, people are very attracted to them because what they do is they give permission to the other person for that person to be themselves. Now, I'm going to give you a very short sales lesson. The most successful salespeople I know have got this incredible ability to make people feel terrific about themselves just the way they are just the way that they are. And, and the reason why is that the minute you actually drop the false self and you drop the ego, what you're saying to the other person is it's okay for you to be just you. And that's when you have authenticity and chemistry in a relationship. Hi, Lisa. How are you going? And self-confidence, Lisa says it very well there. Self-confidence is such an attractive asset. I have to tell you, I'm extremely attracted to people who don't try too hard and I get revolted. Um, and I don't make it obvious, but I get turned off by people that try too hard. And the trying too hard, you can see, is that they're going to extreme lengths to impress you. So um, that's the first thing. And by the way, if you're going to play that game, I can tell you, you are going to be a fucking loser. And I'll explain to you why. Because there will always be someone who has a nicer car. There will always be someone who has got more intelligent kids. There will be always someone who just has a better home in a better suburb with a better aspect and better views. There will always be someone who has got a more powerful position. And the issue is that if your whole life and the essence of who you are is pinned to an external thing, it means that your power is very vulnerable because it becomes dependent on an outside thing. So what I'd like to say is that I look at my own life and I would say that the first 30, 40 years of my life, I can describe it as being the years of the hustle, the years where I was very, very ambitious. 
And what I noticed is happening now is it's like I'm doing a U-turn. And the U-turn is that I am returning back to the source where I'm looking at a life of meaning. And the reason I say that is that what actually happens is that if you just picture, if you picture a clock with the 12 and you can see the hands on the clock moving, the big hand moving through, what actually happens is that the first, you know, let's say from 12 to 6 is the time that you're out there trying to prove yourself, that society has made you not feel about being comfortable about who you are. And then what actually happens is the clock comes around and then you begin to look at the afternoon of your life. And remember that everything comes to an end. Your school years come to an end. The clothes that you wear come to an end. Milk and bread has expiry dates. And what actually happens is springs become summers and days become nights. And what I have to say is that what actually happens is as the clock moves around to the six and starts heading back to the 12, that's what I begin to say that you return back to the source. You start getting intelligent and you know that it is inevitable that there will come a day and a time that you're going to leave this planet. And then you begin to look at your life and say, what is my Dharma? Dharma being, I think it's, you know, a, a Buddhist term that basically says, what is my main purpose in life? What did I come in here for? And you start thinking to yourself, what's my purpose? And I'm going to talk about that in a moment, you know, the why, because what's your why has to be the most common private question I'm asked, whether people call me up through the gym or, you know, face to face or through private messages. What's your why? And um, I'm just going to say to you, well, let me answer that question. What's my why? I got asked that question when I was in my 30s by someone. And I'll never forget it when I said to that person, what's my why? I said, it's really simple. I have cancer. I have a three-year-old. My wife is pregnant with another one. I don't want her selling raffle tickets to get by the next 20 years if I'm not around. That's my fucking why. Which brings me to an interesting point, and that is that your why does change in life. Like your why, I mean, let's talk about, you know, I, was, I ran into someone the other day and they said to me, you know, I actually feel like, you know, but one of my purposes in life is to actually affect change in this, you know, yes, no vote. And I believe that, you know, it's my calling to actually um, help society change once and for all um, and get a yes vote. And um, it was really interesting because I said, I understand that. But... I said, what do you think the why would be of a gay person in Saudi Arabia? Um, do you think that that would be their why? What do you think the why is of a person that has got a month to live? Do you think that one of their whys would be to be able to get as much done as they can in that short time? Um, Elon Musk, what's his why? I've been told that he wants to get um, uh, a certain amount of cars to be electronic um, on the road. What's the why of a person um, in Ethiopia tomorrow that's got to feed six people in his clan? The issue that I make, that sometimes when people are sitting around for looking for their calling, looking for that special thing, 
The reality is that changes throughout your life. And what I'm going to say to you is don't spend too much time trying to work out the purpose of your life because what it will stop you from doing is actually taking action. And what I've learned is this, that if you just see yourself as doing something that you love, that when you're doing it, it flows and it is in line with helping other people. I think that that is what you've got to be doing at that time. It's as simple as that. So if there's something that when you do it, you love doing it, you're good at it, and it is helping other people, I think it's as simple as that. Um, now, a couple of other things I want to say to you. I want you to understand very clearly right from the outset that um, if you want to be fearless, if you never want to be scared, listen to me very carefully. You need to accept that the people that you love the most will die you also have to accept that you will die. The minute you accept that that is going to happen, you are not scared of anything else in your life. Because if you can accept this biggest fear, what actually happens is that you can then handle any fucking thing. You could be walking down a street and there's three people there that look sus and you will walk with your head up high with no fear because you have accepted worst case scenario and are comfortable with it. May I push this to you because may I say to you that for me, the fact that in my 30s I was given at a specific day and a specific time the most likelihood percentage of me being alive at a specific year, which was 2011, when I got comfortable with that, everything else became effortless. And let me explain to you how I got comfortable with it. And listen to this very carefully. I accept that we are here right now and any person you ask will say to you, time flies. It only feels like yesterday. So what we know that life goes in a blink of an eye, that we are here for a very short time and never ever be so myopic to think that you are the center of the universe. The truth is that whilst you are so centered on yourself and whilst we believe to ourself that we are, you know, so important and we are center stage on this planet, the truth is that there have been billions that have walked your path before you that there will be billions that will walk your path after you. And no matter how shit things are in your life right now, I want you to clearly understand that there are millions that have had your problem and maybe even more. As I speak to you this evening, we know that there have been 20 people that did not expect to be dead in Las Vegas three hours ago that are dead now. So what I'm saying is that you should understand that when you accept that you are in this world, but not of this world. And I know that for many of you, this is a vague spiritual term, but I'll repeat it. You are in this world, but not of this world. 
and that you pretty much have got a higher purchase of your time on this planet. And when that time runs out, what actually happens is if you're a spiritual being and you believe that you came here by God and that you're going to another place, you'll realise that the time that you have here is only a fraction of eternity and you in fact are only a small part in the puzzle of billions of people that occupy what we know as being planet Earth. So I'm going to ask you to ask yourself a simple question and that is this. If tomorrow you were told by a doctor that you only had a limited amount of time left in your life. Let's hypothetically say you were told that you had incurable, inoperable cancer and you had an estimate of 60 days. How would you live your life? What would you do? What are you holding off from right now? More importantly, let me ask you this question. Are you the sort of person that thinks it will never happen to me? May I urge you to understand that time on this planet is a non-renewable resource. This minute right now that is going by is the most amount of time you've got left on this planet. Which brings me to the final thing that I'd like you to understand. That probably the thing that you can do that's going to make you the happiest is the following. Picture your funeral. Picture the crowd. And picture someone saying at the funeral, who here was impacted positively by this person? And then you from the casket looked up and you saw hands go up. Thousands of hands go up. You would then realise that you came with nothing, you left with nothing, but you made a major impact to the people around you. May I urge you, as you leave this Sunday night rant, to understand if you can be anything to anyone, be kind. Thank you.